China and to the east coast city of Qingdao. The city was one of the venues for the 2008 Olympic Games and seamlessly combines industry with outstanding natural beauty. The Qingdao Grand Prix is the first stop on an Asian World Tour triple header, which next takes us to Korea, home of some of Judo's rising stars, before we head to Judo's spiritual home, Japan, for the Tokyo Grand Slam and a chance to see some modern day legends of World Judo. At the official draw for the event, there was an expectant atmosphere as everyone waited to see who would be drawn to face who. As the Olympic Games draws ever nearer, every ranking point matters in the race for qualification. And there were some big names in Chindao looking to make an impact. Inside the Gosin Diamond Stadium, the judoka readied themselves. Would the big names impress? And would Chinese judo fans have something to cheer about? But we start with the men's lightweights. Top seed at under 66 kilograms was Mongolia's world number two, Davidoj. He was here in Qingdao looking to reclaim the world number one spot, which he earned just one month ago at the Paris Grand Slam, when he beat Ukraine's Zantaraya to take gold in dramatic fashion. In the final, he'd be facing off against Azerbaijan's danger man, Sheikh Alazada. Sheikh Alazada had looked impressive on his run to the final. <laughs> Having beaten Davidorge's compatriot, Batsatzeg, he then threw Germany's Schneider off a single sleeve grip to put himself into the final. Could Sheikh Alazada cause an upset? Well, I think Davidoj has got to be careful in the opening minute. Sheikh Alazad is so dangerous at the beginning. So whatever attack he does, it has to be solid. Setting him up for the attack, Davidoj. Oh, he's made a mistake! Oh, Sheikh Alazad takes him back with Aranagi, and that was brilliant. Davidoj made a mistake, and he takes him over for the Ippon. Look at that, overstretches, it wasn't committed enough. Sheik Alazada gets the lift, and look at the control with the hands right the way over. These two, great friends off the map, but when it gets onto the map, it's all business. Uh, <coughs> In the final, I knew that my opponent loves to wait and make counter-attacks. But this time, it was me who waited for him to attack, so I could counter him. In our previous fights, it was always me trying to attack and him waiting to counter. I lost to him a lot because of this. It's true, off the tatami we're friends, <coughs> like with many of the athletes. He even congratulated me before my semi-final and gave me some hints about my opponent. But our friendship stays off the tatami. When we face each other on the mat, we are opponents. One weight down at under 60 kilograms, there was more success for Azerbaijan as Mustiev topped the podium. In a gruelling final, he overcame Moren of the Netherlands with this powerful Osoto Kosoto combination, which scored the decisive Wazari. The win moved Muskiev up to world number 16. From the lightest men's weight to the lightest women's weight, and at under 48 kilograms, it was Japan's junior world champion Tanaki who took gold in only her third appearance on the IJF World Tour. In the final, she faced off against 2013 world champion Monk Bat of Mongolia. Two Wazaris from Tanaki, the first a brilliant piece of timing. And the second, a strong counter-attack in Koji Gary, were enough to earn her the Qingdao title. Another rising starlet of Japanese judo. 
and there was more success for Japan one weight up at under 52 kilograms, when former world champion Nishida found herself in the final against Turkmenistan's Ava Maratova. Nishida showed her quality. Already up by Ayuko, she proceeded to drop underneath Baba Muratova with a textbook Marati Sianagi to score Ippon. With reigning world champion Nakamura also at their disposal, it seems Japan are spoilt for choice at under 52 kilograms. And there was another Japanese judoka in the final at under 78 kilograms, in the shape of Hamada. Earlier in the day, she'd stunned Olympic champion Harrison. A weak attack from Harrison gave Hamada an opportunity to go to work on the ground. An opportunity she accepted gratefully. Hamada knew exactly what she wanted and didn't let up until she eventually secured Osai Komi and finally forced Harrison to submit through an arm lock. Hamada had downed the Olympic champion and made it to the final. But there she would be up against the 2011 world champion Chimeo. Could Hamada go all the way, or would Chimeo manage what Harrison could not? Well, Chimeo, dominating the grips as usual, that's what she wants. She wants the sleeve, then she wants the head under control. Hamada, her main objective is to take Chimeo to ground. Big arm coming over all the time from Chimeo. Sleeve grip. Then she sometimes attacks with the O Soto off the grip. There's the O Uchi this time. Hamada just manages to stay inside. And now, Chimeo, can she get the O Soto in? Sometimes she'll go off the one handed grip. Hamada, though, doing everything right. Oh, there's the O Soto now. Oh, she's left her neck up. Chimeo, has she made a mistake? Yes, she has. Hamada goes right the way underneath there for the Shimiwaza, and she gets the Ippon in Newaza yet again. First of all, it was Harrison, now Chimeo. Chimeo shakes her head. That was a brilliant bit of transition there from Hamada. Look at that, keeps the neck up. That was a mistake. And then she's right the way underneath there with the jacket, throws the hips forwards to get the leverage, and gets the submission from Chimeo. She's beaten the Olympic champion, and she's beaten the 2011 world champion. And you have to ask, have Japan found an Olympic contender for the next Olympic Games? One weight up at plus 78 kilograms, reigning world champion Yu Song was in action. Along with her teammate Sissi Ma, the Chinese have dominated the category in recent times and hold the world number one and two slots, respectively. Both had made it to the final here in Qingdao, and Ma was not only up against the world champion, but Song's hometown crowd as well. As they walked out to face each other, it was clear from the start that Song was the more dominant winning every gripping exchange and eventually forcing two penalties to Ma. The hometown hero took the win, and after she stepped off the tatami, her adoring crowd were able to cheer her onto the top step of the podium. It was a great result for Chinese judo and extended both players' advantages at the top of the world ranking list. And there was more success for China in the under 63 kilogram category, as Yang took gold. She faced Turkish Katipoglu in the final and looked determined right from the word go. Contest went to the ground where Yang made her move. Having secured the turnover into the hold, she worked for the strangler and applied enough pressure to earn the submission from Katipoglu. Yang celebrated a well deserved gold medal for China.
One weight up at under 70 kilograms, last year's defending champion Marsov of Germany had once again made it to the final. This year, she would face Croatia's Matic in the gold medal contest. The two had met in competition four times before, with Marzok having won all four. Marzok was clearly intended on making it five wins from five, but Matic had other ideas and started strongly with a drop shoulder throw, which scored Wazari to put her ahead. No answer for the strength and speed of Matic. And the contest was over when Matic once again dropped underneath her German adversary. This time with Sodi Surakumi Goshi for a second Wazari. It was her first win on the IJF World Tour in 2015 and moved her back inside the world's top 20. Under 57 kilograms, world number one Dorsaren of Mongolia continued an incredible run of form that has seen her medal in her last seven outings on the IJF World Tour. In the final, she took on last year's defending champion Roper of Germany. Going into the contest, the head to head between the two was 4 to 2 in favour of Roper, so Dorsaren knew she had her work cut out. With a Yuko each on the board and Roper ahead on penalties, Dosseren struck. Spinning in with a clever reverse shoulder throw, she threw Roper for a Wazari and followed into the hold down. Roper was going nowhere, would have to settle for silver. Dosseren, meanwhile, would celebrate yet another victory as she extended her lead at the top of the world rankings. And there was more to come from Mongolia as 2008 Olympic champion Naidan saw himself into the final of the under 100 kilograms. He was up against 2009 world champion Rakov of Kazakhstan. Both players are amongst the most experienced in the category and that experience showed as neither could find a way past the other's defenses. In the end, the contest was decided on penalties, with Naidan the victor by virtue of his higher attacking rate. It was a welcome return to the top of the podium for Naidan, who will be looking for a third Olympic medal come Rio. At under 81 kilograms, two-time under 73 kilogram world champion Wang had made his way to the final. He started his day in style, dispatching Hung of Chinese Taipei in clinical fashion before powering past Germany's Weizenzen. He then threw Israel's Chen with Osoto and finally produced a great Sianagi into Koji combination to overcome the combat arm to reach the final. Up against him would be Moriyama of Japan. In the opening moments of the match, Wang was penalised and fell behind. And try as he might, he just couldn't find a way back to the match. Suddenly, the moment came. And Wang struck. But amazingly, Mariyama managed to over-rotate and avoid the score. So, with 20 seconds on the clock, surely it was all over for Wang. Well, I don't know how this has happened. Wang has been behind on that Shido all the way through, but he's the one putting in the attacks. And uh, Mariyama, just sitting back and defending now, is he going to get the Shido that he deserves? Just five seconds left. Well, it's injustice, really, because Wang was ahead all the time. And, well, Mariyama was just not attacking at all. 
Oh, and he gets the penalty. Oh, and he's going to go into cold and score. Wang could still win it. So now Maliyama will have to attack. Because I can tell you now, Wang's going to give it everything. Well, that was a good bit of refereeing. It really was. Maliyama was defending too long. Now Wang. Oh, look at that! And he scores for Rosari. And he wins the gold medal. And I've got to say that he fully deserved that. He was attacking all the way through the contest. He was a shido behind, I don't know how. But anyway, in the end it works out because Mariama gets a penalty and then it went into golden score. And then, Wang! Well, look at this! Surigoshi and right on the edge, that didn't matter, started in and he goes out for a Wazari. And Wang wins the gold medal. It was brilliant determination there from the two-time world champion at 73 kilograms. But now in his new weight, he wins here in Qindao. So you have to ask, is he a real contender for the under 81 kilo place at the Olympics next year? And could he really do it at the next weight up? Even though I was down a shiva, I was always confident I could fight back and level things up. I stayed calm and kept fighting right until the end. Once the fight went into golden score, I really believed it was mine to win, and I was able to get the result. The heaviest men's weight of plus 100 kilograms. The big story was the entry of world and Olympic champion Teddy Renair. In Astana three months ago, Renair broke the world record as he claimed an unprecedented eighth world title. Chindao saw his return to international competition for the first time since then. And on the morning of the competition, he seemed calm, focused, and happy to be back. Having made it to the final, he found himself up against Korea's Kim Sung Min, who many consider to be one of his closest challengers. As Renair walked out for the final, surely there could only be one outcome. To avoid Renair's attack, Kim immediately placed both hands on the right side of Renair's jacket. This is known as cross-gripping, and without an instant attack, will result in a penalty. Extreme defensive posture from Kim, another penalty. More dominance from Renair, more cross-gripping from Kim, a third penalty. One more penalty to Kim, and that would be that. Amazingly, Kim just didn't attack. The referee had had enough, and it was all over. Renair victorious, but not the way he wanted. A frustrating return to the IJF World Tour, but a victorious one, all the same. My motivation is the judo. Um, um, I have a dream. Uh, my dream is uh, to be the best judo player in my category. I have a lot of technique, but today is difficult for me. And. Uh, I want for the next competition, for my future, when I like, when I want Ouchigari, I attack Ouchigari. Because my ambition is the Olympic game. And I want a Superman judoka. <laughs> there was another world champion in action at under 90 kilograms. Cuba's 2013 world champion, Gonzalez. He looked sharp in the eliminations, first getting the shimmywaza against Wang of Chinese Taipei, and then displaying brilliant transition against Kakra of the USA to secure the Jujigatami. Next up was a stunning counter against Gurbanov of Azerbaijan, before a beautiful Osoto against Dirk put him into the final. His opponent in the final would be Japan's Nagasawa, who had also shown wonderful throwing ability in his early contests. The final was settled by one moment, 
Gonzalez attacking, but Nagasawa reacting brilliantly and countering Gonzalez for Wazari. Gold for Japan and Nagasawa. And finally, to under 73 kilograms, where another Japanese judoka had reached the final, Hashimoto. In his quarter-final, he'd thrown Italy's Palati with a stunning one-handed Sodi Surakumi Goshi for hip -hop. It was Sodi again in his semi-final, but this time the two-handed version. Wazari, and straight into groundwork. Juji Gatami, hip -hop, and into the final. There he would face the world number one Orozhov of Azerbaijan. Orozhov had started his day by throwing side with a lightning fast Chilata. Then he counted Van Tickel before holding him down. After that, it was two Wazares against Ikibaya. First, winding Makikomi. The second, a driving Kosoto. With the final waiting, Orozhov would have to shake off the memories of the Paris final one month ago, where he'd lost in dramatic fashion to Hashimoto's compatriot, Akimoto. Surely, he'd be able to overcome today's Japanese opponent. Well, Horozhov just got to be careful of that inside lapel grip there from Hashimoto because he doesn't like the Sienagi at all. He stands straight as well. He's better when he's dominating the head. Big arm over the top from Horozhov. And he likes the counters as well. So Horozhov... So consistent at this weight category, and now he's got the inside grip again, Hashimoto. Tries the left Sienagi. Is he going to switch it? Needs to pull that head in again, Orozhov. He likes to pull them in, get them close. Looks for the counters as well. Hashimoto, so traditional with his style. Now he's got the sleeve. Now he's got the lapel. Hashimoto. Oh, he's underneath! Oh, oh, yeah. oh, that was. Once he had the grip, he had the inside lapel, then he had the sleeve, and then Orozhov just needed to get out of there because it was perfect for Hashimoto. Hashimoto then does it. Akimoto did it before. And, well, Orozhov has to find a way of defending that Sienagi. Brilliant stuff from the Japanese. It was traditional style judo, and it was a brilliant ippon to win Hashimoto, the gold medal for Japan. Just have a look at that inside grip there. Look how he explodes underneath. The hips going absolutely central. The support feet going absolutely central. The brilliant lift that he gets to throw him over. And you've got to remember that Hashimoto is only the number four choice in Japan. They've got Ono, they've got Nakaya, they've got Akimoto, and then they've got Hashimoto. Wow, what depth they've got in this category, and what a brilliant technique that was from the young Hashimoto. Well, that's it from Chindao. Shikalazada gave Davidorj a taste of his own medicine. Hamada gave a Newaza masterclass at 78 kilograms. Song thrilled her home crowd. Wang pulled it out of the bag. And Hashimoto stunned Orozhov. Join us in Korea next week for the 2015 Jeju Grand Prix.